Dear friends, I'm now at the end of another walk that I took this morning and it was a pretty chilly but a beautiful morning. So on my way home, I'm going to share what I was thinking about, what was the subject of my reflection and my prayer, and thinking as I was walking this morning. It's about trusting in Jesus. I'm actually this time preparing uh, my lesson for the next Bible study class that I'm going to teach very shortly. And actually it is about trusting in Jesus. Something that sounds very sweet and beautiful, but I know from uh, my own experience, it's not that easy. Uh, this is something I would like to share with you and hopefully we are going to be encouraged together today. At this time we are studying the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12. And this is a very interesting chapter because it is crowded with so many things. Almost it looks like they are very different in character. And yet there is one theme that I believe that combines everything in chapter 12. Jesus Christ preparing his disciples for the day when he's not going to be with them. When they are going to follow him and it's not going to be easy, it's going to be challenging. And what they will need at that time is really trusting in him, trusting in him all the time. And somewhere in the middle of the chapter, there are those beautiful verses where Jesus says he's making a comparison with uh, nature around us, with flowers, with grass, with birds. And he says, look at all of those things. They don't last for too long. And yet your God is taking care of those and how much more you are important and precious in God's sight. You of little faith. And this is what I would like to emphasize at this moment. He's telling them, not you who have a lot of faith, but he says, you people, you followers of Jesus, you of little faith. When I'm thinking of myself, I know that this question of not faith whether God exists, but faith that keeps us going from day to day, which is nothing more, nothing less than a simple life of trust in Jesus, is not as easy as we would like to say it. Every day when we wake up, we are being challenged by things that are waiting us things that are encroaching upon us, our worries, unfinished businesses, and C.S. Lewis said it wonderfully, these are the times when we need to refocus on this other source of power, which is Jesus Christ working in us and pushing back, pushing away our worries, which are there whether we like them or not. So Jesus tells his disciples that there are people with a little faith, when I think of myself, I can certainly say that uh, I'm not man of a huge faith. It is something that I struggle with every day. Not a faith in the existence of God, not even a theoretical faith that God is good, that He is taking care of us, but this active faith that leads me every day through whatever challenges I might be facing. Some of those challenges are real. Some of them are fictional, but they are nevertheless they are there in the forms of worries, being anxious, not being certain how this or that would go. Will God see me through this? Why I am facing this or that? I'm talking about this kind of practical faith. This is what Jesus is talking about when he says, you of little faith. And yet, when I look back in my life, uh, there are at least uh, several things that I so vividly remember when I experienced what I would like to call that nearness of God that really excited me, a faith that sustained me regardless of the circumstances. I remember early 1993 when I was as a humanitarian visiting the besieged city of Sarajevo in the middle of war in the Balkans, a city that was like an open concentration camp. 
every day being attacked by mortars and all kinds of missiles and snipers. People are dying every day. I was planning to spend only a few days in Sarajevo, but I ended up spending the full month in Sarajevo because it was a period of time when practically no one could leave Sarajevo. And these were the days when I truly experienced what the nastiness of war really looked like. Even myself, I can recall three or even four times when I was running for my life, when the sniper bullets were hitting at the walls not far away from me, you can actually hear the sound and zipping of those bullets and you can hear them hitting the walls of the houses. I've also seen funerals of the people who have been killed. Like one day I witnessed seven or eight or nine funerals taking place in a small place on a small graveyard at the same time. I've also visited hospitals and saw people without legs and without arms. I had my dose of experience what the war looked like. And it was a real situation in which you wouldn't be certain when you woke up in the morning that you would necessarily see the end of the day because the war was real. Dying was real every day. And yet I remember that those four weeks that I spent in Sarajevo at that time were filled with the assurance that my Jesus is with me, that I am under his control and that whatever might happen, I am okay. In the morning I would pray, Lord, I am in your hands. I cannot really protect myself much. Don't let me do anything foolish myself, but I am in your hands and I know that I'm safe with you. But even if I should not reach the end of this day, I know I'm safe in your hands. I'm going to see you on the other side. Having spent those four weeks in Sarajevo was a beautiful, powerful experience for me of what it means to experience God being close to you, but also having this taste of trusting Him, regardless of what is happening around me. So that at the end of the day, when I was able to leave the city of Sarajevo, I was sorry that I had to leave Sarajevo because I was afraid I was going to lose that experience, that beauty of experience, that sense of closeness, sense of trust in Christ. Another experience that I remember very well, 2013, when uh, I was called by my uh, doctor and he told me I had a cancer sitting on my left kidney. I had the kidney removed and eventually it proved to be all right for me in a sense that uh, I do not have any follow-up consequences. After that uh, surgery, I am fine six years later, but I can still remember vividly when I received that call. First, it was kind of surreal. The other thing was that I did not panic. My first reaction and the reaction that kept me through those months was, I'm trusting in God. Everything will be fine. I'm in his hands. I'm not letting myself panic. And even when I was being taken into the surgery room, I remember that I was praying, saying, Lord, I'm in your hands. I know everything will be fine, but even if not, I know I'm fine in you. I'll see you on your side. And then I remember also something that happened just a few weeks ago, like a deja vu of the situation that happened six years ago again when I was called by my doctor and he also delivered a news that was not really good news, that potentially could be even more devastating than the one delivered six years ago. But praise the Lord, everything is under control now and I, I am fine. But I remember that moment, it was surreal again, but I did not panic. My response was, Lord, I will trust you. I will walk one day at a time. Whatever happens, I am safe in your hand. I'm not trying to portray myself as a hero here. Quite contrary. I'm only giving you those three moments in my life because they serve as kind of anchors in my life, reminding me always when I'm anxious and worried about little things. And that's what I want to emphasize now that surprises me so often, 
that in those moments which were really meaning life and death, somehow the Lord equipped me with a strength to trust Him. And yet, on a daily basis, when I'm feeling fine, when there are no major concerns, I find myself very often, too much than necessary, being anxious, worrying about all kinds of things. Some of them are the things that I should never worry about. The others are the real issues, the real matters. And the same can be with you. You might be facing all kinds of challenges. You might have a situation of family that worries you, that makes you anxious. You might have a sick child that requires an ongoing care and you don't know what the outcome is going to be. You might be worried about whether you are going to lose job, whether you have enough money to make all the payments you need to make. You might be worried about the circumstances, the situation in the world. My goodness, it's not good at all and anything can come any moment. There are, there are a number of things that we find ourselves worrying about. And it is about those situations, I believe, that God is calling us through this message of Jesus when he says, you of little faith, trust in me. Trust in me. Everything will be fine. At the end of the day, if not even now, everything is going to be great. Everything is going to be fine. I will take care of you. And my friends, let us be realistic. This life is short. doesn't matter whether we live 30, 40, 50, 60, 90, 100 years. It goes very quickly. In comparing this with a life that is everlasting, this is only a fragment, fragment of time. And the glory that is awaiting us, and I firmly believe in that glory, by far supersedes all the misery of our lives today. One day, we will be looking back and we would say we have been upset about nothing. This is beautiful. This was worthwhile trusting Jesus. And this is where I'm trying to lead you with this reflection. Jesus knows that we are people of little faith. He knows we are struggling. He does not expect us to be some heroes of faith who are constantly keeping our minds and emotions under control till we are satisfied with ourselves how strongly we believe. He just expects us to extend our hand of trust, simple trust, and get hold of His hand which is always stretched towards us and hold unto Jesus' hands, regardless of what is happening with us, around us. If we do that, one day we are not going to be sorry. One day we will be looking to the face of Jesus and say, Thank you, Lord.